What's up guys, Richard here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now over the last two to three weeks I've been traveling around New South Wales, Australia so I haven't done much development and basically the Bananas and Pajamas game was put into storage while traveling. Now that doesn't mean I was completely out of the loop when it comes to development things. In fact I've just been randomly looking at documentation for Unreal etc. But while doing that I discovered a new engine called the Flax engine. And as you can see on my screen right now I have the installer and this engine actually only came out on December the 18th. Now normally I would say, ah, another engine. We have an Unreal, Unreal version 5 coming out shortly. We've got Unity, which is eh, and then we've got Godot, which is kind of stealing from Unity. Why do we need another engine? We've pretty much got all our, our spaces covered. So I didn't give it much credence at first, but I decided I'm on traveling around. I've got not much to do, so I'll just download it and play around with it. Now, after playing around with it for a little bit, I was like, well, this is pretty much the engine that I always wanted. It's like a beautiful mixture of Unreal and Unity. It takes the good of Unreal, the good of Unity, puts them into one engine, and then takes like little bits and pieces here from Godot. Now, I know the developer's probably going to be like, no, it's not like that. But realistically, that's how I kind of feel. And I'm happy for that. So... Grats to you, developer. And I say developer because primarily there was one dude who built this over eight years, which is just impressive in itself. Now, I will say for the Godot people who do follow me that this is a commercial engine, which means it has a license, you've got to pay for it eventually. Uh, the way it works is if you make over 25,000 USD for a commercial non-educational project per quarter, then you've got to pay, I think, 4%. Um, if I'm making that much anyway, I'm happy to pay an engine developer because, you know, they deserve it. So let's have a look. So we've got the news and we've got a little store which doesn't do anything yet. You've got your documentation. Now documentation, oh my god, thank the lords because Unreal's documentation sucks. Like it took me ages of basically digging through random forum posts to figure out how Unreal works underneath in the code. And Flax is just beautiful. I could read through it and I got everything I pretty much needed straight away. Um, engine version 1's out, but there's been like a, a small release with a bunch of bug fixes, like 1.01 or something. Uh, it's very easy, it just basically pops up a star and you just go update. Uh, and then you've got some demo projects and then my project myself. So, basically what I did is I, I wanted to see if this engine could do what I wanted it to do. So I grabbed my Bananas and Pajamas game, which I'd been building in Unreal, and I started porting it to Flax. And the idea for the Bananas and Pajamas game in Unreal originally was just to like test my abilities to make materials, animation, stuff like that because I'm a programmer, that's my background type of thing. Uh, but I wanted to test that with an Unreal because Unreal was what I was planning to use for my major project. Now, I might actually change that. I might end up using Flax for my major project which I'll start within the next two weeks or so once I feel I'm at a good enough place. And the great thing with this is if you know Unreal or Unity, Basically, all your knowledge is transferable, like 90%. Like, all interface knowledge from Unreal is basically transferable. Or the the animation graphs, the scripting, uh, uh, not the scripting, sorry, the animation graphs, uh, the visual scripting, I should have said, um, the uh, material editor, that's all transferable. If you know Unity's uh, code, like a C-sharp code, basically all that's transferable. So, if you know both, you can just step right into this engine with very little changes and you'll be right to go. So I've learned it for like two days seriously now, and I've already built like stuff that would have taken me ages if I didn't know either of those engines. If you're brand new to like game development and you're starting with Flax, it's gonna be hard because there's like five video tutorials out there made by some random people. I plan to make tutorials in the future myself, but uh, you will need to go through the documentation. Anyway, so let's have a look what I've got. Uh, basically, I've got my little banana dude. He spots this, like, hovering sphere. He runs at it, and then he slows down, and he stops. And then the intention is he goes, Rawr! He plays his attack animation. Here it is. Rawr! His attack animation. Okay, so, um, that's, that's the intention with this game. This basically proved to me it does everything I needed to do, because all I needed to do was find paths, um, attack, you know, have blends of animations, materials work, lighting, all that type of stuff. The only thing Flax lacks at this stage is multiplayer support, but that's basically their high priority at the moment. There's multiple people working on just multiplayer, so we may see some form of multiplayer within the next two months released, maybe with version 1.1, a really basic form of multiplayer. But if the devs do watch this video, try and get Steam integration into it. I know that's asking for a lot, 
but that would like set this engine 100% for me. And it was helped so much with my major project, which was going to be a massively Steam multiplayer style game. Not like massive on online game, but like a, a kind of, a, you got like 5 vs 5 type of thing over Steam or something like that. Anyway, so that's basically my simple test and that allowed me to test everything. So let's show you what it actually looks like behind the hood. Okay, so I'll start with the material system. So if I open up the material system, you can see it's basically just a carbon copy of the Unreal material system. Pretty much everything is exactly the same. You've got your domain over here with your decals or your GUI or widgets as you call them in Unreal. And then you've got your lit, your unlit, and all the nodes are basically the same. The only real differences I've noticed is that you've got two texture nodes, one for normal and one for just textures in general. And the second thing is you won't type a vector 3, you would just type a color if you wanted to make a color. But pretty much everything else is the same. I dived into the materials, uh, like, I won't say a fair bit, but enough to know my way around the material system. And I can say that basically Unreal's material system goes a lot more in depth, there's a lot more hidden functionality compared to Flex's or Flex's. Oh, what, what flax flax i keep mispronouncing it i think like flexing uh anyway flax is a material system but i think you can pretty much do everything you need and i'm pretty happy with what i can do with it so i've got no uh qualms there in any case it's a lot better than unity's material system that is for sure okay so uh then what you would do let's say if you've got a model my bite model here when you drag it in you specify okay is this an animation a model or a skinned model Models just static models, skinned model is basically a rig plus model and one and an animation is just animation data that will automatically attach to the correct rig. I don't know how it does that, uh, but maybe when you specify the animation, if there's no issues, it just connects it. But yeah, I, I kind of like that you don't have to put all these extra steps in like Unreal makes, but maybe that helps with really large scale games. Okay, animation graph, again, basically a carbon copy of Unreal. Uh, I'm just going to maximize this. You can see here I've basically built two parameters. I've got my walking or running, I should have called it, and attacking, and they can actually mix together so you can be running and attacking at the same time. Um, I'll just step through what I've seen here. Uh, this is my state machine, which is actually, I'm just going to hit this button. I really like this, just show whole graph. Anyway, you go into the edit, and here are the various states. I've got a walking and attacking state. When it's in a walking state, uh, I've got a blend space that's happening. Now, if you come from Unreal, you know blend spaces are actually separate, like they're separate files, and then you access them from the animation graph. I kind of like the fact that it's just straight here in the animation graph. It makes it really simple. And you've got a blend uh, 2D space as well, which is good. And the way it works is you basically assign an animation to one of these um, layers, I guess. And if I go to the first, well, let's go to the run animation. So here's the run animation. It's going, okay, cool, run animation. Play it at one speed, it's going to start playing at 0.1 because my range is 0 to run 1 with, for the run. Uh, and that's basically saying once you reach 10% of your run speed, just start playing the actual run animation. Or at least full merge to the run animation from the idle animation. Because I found like if it was longer than that, then you'd see the slow idle merge into run, which is just kind of weird. And then you just drag your parameter into the X field over here. And if it was a 2D, you'd have a Y there and you drag it in there. It's pretty straightforward how it works. You don't even need the documentation. Okay, then obviously you've got your conditions. This is the only condition I'm not sure if I actually did correctly. So if anyone wants to point out who actually knows Flax, which is a very, very small group of people right now. Uh, then what I've got is it's basically going, okay, go back to just a pure run if you're not attacking and... The previous animation, which was the bite animation, or the merge bite animation, uh, has finished basically playing and is about to play again. That's what the 0 0.05 is. If anyone wants to point out if I did something wrong with that, let me know, because I'm not sure if that's actually kicking in. Anyway, that there is the animation graph. Uh, so what you've seen so far is the materials, the animations. It's really, really simple how it works. Just drag and drop all that stuff straight in there. Let's have a look at the code side of things. So. The code system back in the actual like API or the all the functionality that you tap into and how it's set up and everything, it basically mirrors Unity. I've found that you can pretty much go search for a Unity how-to, copy that, paste it into Flax, and then just change like uh, camel casing and stuff like that for the most part and get what you need. And sometimes there's like some Unity functions that don't exist within Flax, which I'm assuming will just come with time. But overall, the back end is so similar. 
Now you can actually write this in C Sharp or C++. You have the option. If I right click here and go New Script, you can specify C Sharp or C++, um, which makes things very easy if you want to actually program in C++. Now I decided to do it in C Sharp because all the documentation is in C Sharp and it mirrors Unity in that respect. So I didn't want to mess around with C++. Maybe for my major project, I would probably write it all in C++ but I'm not too concerned at this stage. I just wanted to see what was possible. So here you can see it's literally just a mirror copy of Unity in so many different ways. Um, but I really like how easy it is to access things like uh, parameters from the animation graph. Like Unreal makes it hell. Like you've got to have so many, you got to like write custom functions to call in and then you've got special macros and it's just a, it's a mess, especially if you want to go from the visual script into the code and into the visual script, it becomes just like chaos, like just pure chaos. Uh, but this is just really easy and you can like even create visual scripts. Now you're probably curious how the scripting works. Well, it works kind of like Unity. Again, you just drag the script. So I've got this face target. You just drag the script straight onto it and boom, there you go, there's your script. Which I guess is kind of similar to Unreal's components, but components are just like a complete mess compared to this. Uh, so yeah, you can just do that. Uh, and you can also create visual scripts. Now, I'm not going to really do any visual script, I forgot to name it. I'm not going to do any visual scripting per se, because that's not really something that I will do that much of. But you can just create visual scripts, like, really easy. You've got your functions over here, your parameters, it's the same type of thing. Works similar to the animation graph, and that's one thing I like about this. Everything seems to work well together. Like, you don't go into the animation system and go, huh, this looks rather different compared to this system over here, the scripting system, or this or that. With Unreal, there's a lot of guesswork involved and the document documentation is just shoddy. So I am actually really loving Flax and I'm planning to build my future game projects in Flax um, on the condition that there isn't some fatal flaw of the entire system and it all comes crashing down. So I can always go back to Unreal, but I'm going to try and build in Flax moving forward because I just love how fast I can just prototype stuff within it. It's so much faster than Unreal. Even its visual scripting works just better in so many different ways. So that's pretty much it. If you've liked this video, I know this was a long one and it's probably not related to most of you guys out there, but I just wanted to point out why suddenly my whole interface is going to look kind of weird moving forward because I will be using Flax for a lot of my projects. Okay, like it, share it around, sub to the channel, see you all in the next video.